What's going on everybody? In this video series, I wanna make you a launch monitor master, all right? So we're talking about how to understand what launch monitors have taught us and what things that you can work on in your game that will help you out. There's, there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of data that comes out of having launch monitors, and this really doesn't depend on what map monitor you have. They all are kind of telling us the same thing. So we need to understand what that data is, how we can use it, what can we actually control so we can actually get better. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, Scott Oden coming at you. We're getting ready here for the holidays. If you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas everybody. Happy holidays if you celebrated the other holidays as well. We are getting into that time of year where we're gonna be flipping the calendar and going into the next set of, uh, you know, getting ready for the spring and all that stuff, but we can start working on our swing and all of that stuff too. And we'll have pro golf and all that coming back soon. So always an exciting time when we're in the golf world. Before we get into the video about launch monitors, if you are interested, we have our swing boot camp that is starting the first of January, okay? So you can join in on that. Make sure you head over to scottogengolf.com, space is limited, sign up for it. The entire month of January, you can get help and we'll get you on the right track with your golf swing. Today, we're gonna talk about your launch monitor, all right? I wanna start going through the data and talking about and simplifying things and helping people understand what you can control and what numbers really, really, really matter when you're going to get better. These are the numbers I take a look at all the time, and we're gonna go and take a very deep dive into what those numbers are, okay? So this is gonna be a five-part series because honestly, there's only five numbers that we need to look at because what ends up happening is when we look at these numbers, they all play an importance or they affect all the other numbers. It's not like, hey, you look at this number, okay, outside of the five we talk about, if you look at the other ones and you try to affect them, you're actually affecting these five that then affects the number that you might be looking at. So we wanna simplify it down. We wanna get you working on things. And when we look at professionals and what they do, to be honest, these are the numbers they are really good at and these are the numbers they control. And that's what honestly makes them really, really good at hitting the golf ball. So we're gonna get into it. And today, that first number is gonna be low point. So low point, why are we looking at low point in the golf swing? So first off, we have to understand what low point is, okay? So low point in the golf swing, you have to think about the swing as, you know, it's an arc, right? It's just a circle going around us, okay? So that club is coming back and through and our launch monitors are measuring that swing as it's coming through on that arc. Now, wherever the lowest point of that arc would be, that is the low point of your swing. Lowest point of the arc, low point, there you go. So that is a number that we want to control, okay? So I think a lot of people, when they think low point, they think angle of attack. Angle of attack is that angle that you are coming down into the golf ball. It is different, okay? Low point is actually a number that when you hit it, it's not even gonna be where you touch the ground, right? It's actually gonna be a point when I'm coming through, if I'm hitting an iron, I'm gonna be making a divot, okay? I'm going to actually be coming through and that low point is gonna be after I have already entered the ground. So in theory, it's a point that is underground is where the lowest point of your swing is going to be. So if we were able to really measure like the depth you know, with the radar, you would see it would actually be some point, the lowest depth of your swing would be under the surface of the ground, right? So that is essentially what you are looking for in this swing, okay? That is what low point is. Now, why does low point matter? Well, it has a huge effect on a bunch of different things throughout our swing. So one going to be where are you hitting the ball on the club face, especially vertically, okay? Are you gonna hit it high on the face? Are you gonna hit it low on the face? How is that gonna work, right? It also is gonna have a huge impact on dynamic loft, right? 
How is that club face getting delivered to the golf ball? It will also have an influence on your club path. It's also gonna have an influence on where that club face is at impact. It has an influence on a ton of things. You're the centeredness of the hit, all of it, right? So we have to be able to control that low point, all right? So what do we want our low point to be? Well, it's really gonna depend on the club that you are hitting, okay? And it's also gonna depend on how much speed you generate. So for example here, all right, let me t let's talk about this number, okay? If I'm hitting a seven iron with the PGA, okay, for the PGA, you're gonna typically see an average of around four, four and a half inches in front of the golf ball where that low point occurs. Now, the longer the club gets, the closer to the golf ball that will get. The shorter the club, the more that low point is moving in front, okay? So you're thinking, all right, hey, we're hitting and driving that golf ball a little bit more when we have a shorter club. If you think about what people typically do, they don't do that with the shorter clubs. When they start adding loft, their low point actually gets closer to the ball because a lot of times they're trying to add loft or hit it in the air themselves instead of driving that golf ball. So we wanna make sure that we are getting that low point to extend out the shorter the club gets. That's how you're gonna be able to keep the ball driving and you're gonna be able to get some more distance, cleaner contact, know how far your ball is gonna go. Now, if you are on the slower swing, swing speed side, that low point will be moving back for all the clubs. So here's, here's an example, all right? We have all the PGA numbers, we have all the LPGA numbers. I want you to take a look at the fairway woods and the driver, okay? So PGA, on average, gonna have a faster swing speed, all right? So because of that, those low points are going to be a little bit more forward, okay? So beyond the golf ball. Look at a fairway wood where the low point for the PGA Tour player is still after the golf ball. And with a driver, it's pretty much at the golf ball. Whereas the LPGA, we're actually moving closer to the ball and actually behind the golf ball for those clubs. Why is that? Why do we see PGA Tour players being able to get, get away with having that low point on those lower lofted clubs? Well, what it ends up being is speed, okay? they have the ability to compress that ball. The more that low point's moving forward, you're gonna kind of drive and take a little bit of loft off of it. That ball has enough speed where it is still gonna get airborne and it's going to be getting up in the air with spin and all that. They're also trying to take some spin off of it too. So with the LPJ or just slower swing speeds, we generally need to help the ball get launching just a little bit, especially on the lower end, because if we hit it too low, we don't have enough speed for that ball to stay in the air. So we need to get that ball launching so we can have very little spin, have it in the air and kind of get that umbrella type shape to our shots, okay? So that is what we are looking for when we have low point. Now, the one other very, very important thing that we have to look at, and this is why it is so important that we need to work on this. How much margin for error are you looking for, okay? This is one of the biggest separators from your tour players, even your really, really good ball strikers, okay, top 10, to like a 10 handicap or worse. So here's, for, here's an example. If we were to hit 10 shots, okay, top 10 ball striker in the world, their low point would be plus or minus a half inch, okay? They would hit all these shots. They would have that low point. So again, for a seven iron, the average is gonna be like four, four and a half. And every shot is gonna be within plus or minus a half inch of that, okay? If you go to the rest of the PGA Tour average, it's gonna be 0.75, three quarters of an inch, okay? So it gets a little worse, but not much worse. If you go to a 10 handicap, you have plus or minus three inches, okay? And then it gets worse. So think about that. You have a low point variance of six inches from where that spot is, plus you're already closer to the ball. You don't. You might be hitting way behind it, hitting it really heavy when you have some of those plus or minus threes that will inevitably come into your game. So we need to work on this and getting this number consistent so we can make some good contact as we're going through. Okay, so 
what can we do about this, right? What can we do about this as we go through? Well, luckily, we can take a look at some things that are going to help us out. All right, so I got a couple of swings here that we are gonna take a look at. So we are gonna use our sports box technology and we are going to take a look at what is going on. So one of the things that we work on to control that low point, okay? So step one, if you wanna get better at your low point control, okay? It is going to be how your pelvis moves, okay? Now, it's not gonna be necessarily what you think, we're gonna use a word that kind of gives everybody the heebie-jeebies here, and that's gonna be sway, okay? Sway is something that a lot of people don't like to hear. They think they have too much of it or whatever, and in reality, it is something that you need and you want in your golf swing. So what we need is when good players are swinging the golf club and they are getting that low point forward, what they are doing is getting their pelvis to sway forward. So I've got three swings here for an example. So this first swing, okay, as we kind of come into impact, you can see here on the sports box, my pelvis has swayed 2.3 inches to the target. So it's gone back and from where I started, it is now 2.3 inches ahead, okay? My low point on that swing was 2.9 inches ahead. Not bad, okay? So not bad, but Still not as good as what we see from really, really high quality ball strikers. And I'm not so sure I'm gonna be able to maintain that all the time. So we can go to the second swing, okay? And we pull up that number, we're gonna see a 1.9, okay? And this is exactly what I'm talking about as we go through it, okay? So in that next swing, okay, as I'm moving, okay, you're gonna see I start moving my pelvis a little bit more forward, but I'm still not moving it far enough forward. And because I do that, I'm going to have variance in how I'm hitting it. Again, I'm already one inch off of where I started that previous swing, okay? So I need to get my pelvis. How far forward? Well, the best ball strikers, they're getting their pelvis consistently six, seven inches forward with these shorter irons. Okay, they're getting that club and their body to move well beyond. So we're talking in a game of inches, I need to be moving my body well forward if I'm going to get this right, okay? Now let's move on to this third swing, okay? As we move through this, okay? So I started getting to around six inches of pelvis movement forward, okay? Now I've got four inches on that low point. So I'm getting now at the low end of what the tour players do, okay? So my low point of my swing, I'm going to really see that club really start driving the ball. You can see I launched that ball lower at 17 degrees, okay? Let's take a look. 18 and a half on the previous swing, okay? Let's take a look. 17.6 on the other one. You can see that low point went forward a little bit, but again, the inconsistency is really what's going to get me there. So we got to start driving that pelvis forward if we're going to get this right. Okay. So let's go through that and let's talk about it as we're going through that. Okay. So pelvis movement in the backswing. Okay. Everybody's afraid of swaying. This is what swaying looks like. Okay. The bad kind. All right, where you sway and you're not turning at all, okay? And your body just essentially tilts, right? So I'm tilting, so then I'm gonna do this on the way through, okay? We want to get our pelvis moving, but I also want to turn, okay? Rory McIlroy, okay, Brooks Kepka, guys that hit the ball really far, they sway off the ball, okay? But they're also turning when they do it. And then what ends up happening is they turn back and they sway. And the first thing they start doing is starting to sway it back and loading in that front leg so they can then keep pushing their pelvis forward, which then lets them turn, right? So they are pushing that pelvis forward as much as they possibly can, okay? If we can do that, we can then start making 
much better, much more consistent contact on the golf ball. So when I see people do this, they really are going to feel like, man, that ball is like way back here. Yeah, it's going to be. All right. You're going to feel like you're hitting the ball more on your side. Okay. As you go. But that means you're moving everything forward in the arc as you go through. So what does that look like? Let's just do a little drill here. I'm going to let myself sway back, sway forward and keep pushing the hips forward as we go. Okay, beautiful. So in that drill right there, my low point on that swing, 6.8, okay? So I'm getting that low point forward, I'm able to smash the ball, and I'm able to get that golf ball to travel with some speed with not a ton of effort. You can see a launch of 16.3. So if you're somebody that looks at TrackMan or FlightScope or any launch monitor numbers, you'll see the launch that they take, okay? It's a lot lower than what most people do. This is a big way that they are doing that, okay? So that is number one in trying to control how you are going to get that low point forward. Now, number two that we have to talk about, because if you want to move your hips properly, okay, your body is going to respond to how the golf club works, okay? So we need to get our hands, our arms, our wrists in a proper spot where our pelvis can actually move forward properly, okay? So if we're going to do this, we need to understand one thing, okay? When we are looking at our hands, if I hold my hands straight out in front of me, Okay, I've got my left hand, got my right hand. Okay, when I'm hitting a golf ball, my left hand is going to look like this. Okay, so if you just bend it, okay, like you're making like a like a little goose head or whatever right here, and then you're going to bend your right wrist back. Okay, that's it. That's what you're going to look like. Okay, if I'm going to push my pelvis forward, I need to be doing that so I can push forward and have the face be square, okay? That is how I'm actually gonna be able to successfully do this. If I don't do that, let's say I'm coming in and I'm backwards, okay? So I've essentially got the wrist backwards, which happens all the time, okay? So I've got this and I've got something like this. I can't go forward because I can't square the face up, all right? And then I get out of balance and weird things are gonna happen, okay? So I have to learn as I'm coming through that this is where the wrists need to be, okay, as I go through. So again, what I like to do, set those wrists early. So I'm gonna bring it back here, bend my left wrist. So I call it, we call it flexion. You extend your right wrist, okay, which isn't really a medical term, but we, we use that one a lot, okay. So I'm trying to get here with those wrists. I'm gonna bring it back start pushing that pelvis forward, okay? Got to start pushing that pelvis forward so we can get it. And you can see there, 5.6 on that low point, all right? So got to get your wrists in a good spot that are actually going to work for this move to have a chance. Now, number three is going to be do you understand how the club face works, okay? So when we're going to hit a golf shot, not only is this club swinging in a circle, there's a lot of circles going on. So one of those being this one right here, we've got to get the club face rotating. It rotates some way, shape, or form. If you are somebody that is trying to keep the club face from rotating, you are doing it wrong, okay? I don't care who it is, there is some form of a release in the golf swing. You are moving the face throughout the swing, okay? Now, there are different ways. You can actually rotate it the other way, a la Dustin Johnson, okay? Brooks Koepka, where they're kind of doing more of an under release. Or you can be like Tiger JT, where they're doing more of a turn down release, okay? But there is some sort of release that is gonna go on. If you try not to release the club, you are going to run into the same problems where when you go forward, that club is going to be so open, you are going to shank it, 
all right? So you have to understand how to release the club on the way through. So again, you can have a turn down release where you let the club turn over a little more, or you can have the DJ release or the Brooks release where face is already squared up, looking at the ball, and then we kind of release it under a little bit more so that club's gonna look more at the sky on the way through. Really just kind of depends on which one works for your game, but you have to do one of those so you can at least square it up. Now I can hit balls pretty well doing that, and you can see, without even moving my pelvis, look at that, I've got it up to 3.8 on that low point. Now we combine everything in here, keep the wrists, understand how the wrists work at impact, understand the release, understand the pelvis moving forward. Okay, if we do that, there we go. I'm getting that low point 6.3 there that is going to make me hit it really solid, get that ball coming out low, driving. You're gonna get more consistent distance. You're gonna have very good faith that you are gonna make good contact with the golf ball. And that's what you're looking for. The best players, Rory, one of the best ball strikers, his low point, he's up in the sevens. Brooks Kepka, he's up in like the eights, okay? If you are a fader, you're gonna have more of a low point that's farther ahead of the golf ball. If you already draw the golf ball, it's going to come back a little bit, okay? That is another thing you're gonna look at, but the, the moral of the story is you gotta get that low point out in front. And again, when we start looking at numbers that people control and actually have consistency with, right? I don't like that word a ton, but if we're looking for a consistent number, this is the number they're able to do. And they work on controlling these parts of their swing and then let all the other numbers happen as they go through. So low point is a very, very important one that we wanna look at. So that is the first step to mastering your launch monitor. Start looking at your low point. Now, what I would recommend, you can see I'm just focusing on the low point number, but if you want, you can take a look at all of them and see, hey, when I hit a shot, just take a scroll through and start looking for some patterns. Again, you're not controlling anything but low point. I don't want you looking at it and saying, okay, what else do I need to fix? You're working on one number and seeing how it affects the rest, okay? We're gonna be going through and putting more to the puzzle going forward, but this is a big one. This is a very universal one. Again, see it across the board, depending on swing style, all that stuff, doesn't really matter. Really the only thing that matters is the type of shot shape you're hitting and then how much speed you have. That would have a little adjustment, but the consistency level that you want with it is going to be the same, okay? Again, as you get to the longer end of the bag, you're moving closer to the ball. You get to the shorter end of the bag, you're moving more, more ahead of the ball, okay? So if you have questions about it, please comment down below. I know there's a lot in it. Let me know if you have any questions. Please discuss down in the comments and click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. We got more coming with it. And as always, we have more with Let's Get Your Swing Going. Let's take a look at it, see what you need to be specifically working on in your game. We have our boot camps and our online coaching. We're signing up for it now. Make sure you grab one before one of those spots before it fills up. All right. Link is down in the description. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.